Welcome everyone back for day two of our three-day series. Uh, good morning and I want to first thank everybody for coming back and joining us on day two. It's great to see so many people. I, I see the names of the people who as they check in and join on and so many of our great friends and colleagues are all together today. So thanks very much again for coming. Also, you know, our our webinar series titled Safety Beyond COVID-19, we're not talking about jumping back into this thing immediately and breaking every barrier. We have to listen to the regulations of what the people are talking to us about and making sure we're following along with those regulations. What we're trying to achieve today in these sessions and yesterday and again on Sunday is basically to give you an understanding of the magnitude of the issues and challenges that we face. Uh, and it's something that we haven't had to face before in our lives in the shopping center industry. Our experts with us to today again will focus on the new role of the shopping centers and retailers, which is the discussion on the liability, obligation, burden, authority, duty, trust to our customers and to the shopping center staff and the retailer staff, providing the checklists and knowledge to make your lives easier. That's what we're attempting to do here. And as uh, Leah was just suggesting, go online to the MECSC.org website, go to the webinar section. You can download all of these checklists, all of the information, and we'll keep updating that with current information as we go along. So we're here to support you. Uh, the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers, we now represent over a thousand retailers 875 shopping centers and over a thousand engaged members that we've been with you for 26 years. So our role, I think, as you know by now, is to help you to facilitate your business and also to assist you to raise your personal and professional profile locally, globally, and regionally. Our funding is generated with networking events, certificate education programs, and conferencing. We'll continue to represent the retail conference uh, and the retail and the shopping center industry over the next 25 years or longer. We are providing our webinars free of charge. However, if you want to contribute to our organization for 100 dirhams, we'll provide you with a certificate completion of our awareness program. This is what we're calling it, awareness program for safety beyond COVID 2019, the three webinars. I also want to thank the Dubai Association for their generous support to our members and our team to help reach out to their databases, which spread right across the MENA region, also into Western, Central and Eastern Asia. So thank you as well for them. It's made a, a great difference for us to reach out to so many new people. For those in the retail industry who have lost their jobs, we are offering a free one year membership to assist those who need our help to get back up and running successfully and back into the industry. Please contact Angelo in our membership department and he'll help you out on that. We have the whole protocol and checklist you have to go through and then join up because we're able to help you. That's our job and we want to do that. Our team is here for you. I think you've always known that. You just need to reach out to us in any of our many platforms. And just to go through our many platforms again, email, LinkedIn, other social media platforms, our Retail People magazine, the 2020 directory that's just coming out soon, the end of the month, WhatsApp Retail monthly newsletter that we get out on a regular basis, the WhatsApp, uh, the, also the Voice On Demand retail podcasts, our webinars, the Video On Demand, the retail YouTube video channel, and of course, get a hold of us on the phone. And I know that many of you in the last day or so have been reaching out to me and my email box is full. So first of all, I wanted to thank you for reaching out. I want you to know that I'm here. So carry on because it makes me feel um, very positive and strong and optimistic for the industry when I chat with everybody and, and uh, just touch base. Let me introduce our experts again who are joining us. Uh, and they joined us yesterday and they'll join us again on Sunday to understand the best way forward when health and well-being at the forefront of our business in the retailer and shopping center business. In the retail industry for many, re for many decades and in the region since the 1990s, he's the founder and the chairman 
of his uh, business called MacArthur Retail Development Specialists. He has been a member of the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers since we began 26 years ago. With experience developing, running, operating, leasing, managing shopping centers in the region, including uh, such centers as City Center Dira, Dubai Festival City, Mall of Qatar, and countless other shopping centers around the world. Phil has touched the lives and has supported many, many of us retail professionals globally. So please welcome back Phil MacArthur and uh, Phil is with us. I'm going to also introduce another gentleman who's with us yesterday, joining us again from Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, the chairman of the board of Sahat Property Management, also a member of the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers for decades, also being the president of the board of directors of the organization and other roles contributing to the success of the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers and Retailers. The leader in the retail industry in Saudi, CEO of his uh, Red Sea Shopping Mall, winning the CEO uh, award of the year for Sedco. He also runs his own business called REDS, which is the short form for real estate development specialists. Please welcome back Muhammad Alaway, and thanks for being, at this, uh, being with us against Muhammad. Thank you. And Phil, your topic this morning to begin with is the new normal, preparing for what lies ahead. We're looking forward to hearing your insights and welcome back, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, David, and <clears throat> welcome back everyone. And uh, the latest count I see is 292 tuning in and uh, we appreciate your attendance, your support, and you know all the questions you're sending. In this age of uncertainty, we're all looking at examples as to what to expect in the future of our industry. Will the shoppers come back to the shopping centers? Will retailers be able to manage the loss of revenue during the lockdown period? And how can we make our retail development safe for our customers? These are all valid questions, and of course, nobody has all the answers. In the new normal, organizations will have to learn that we need to prepare. We need to prepare across the board in all of our operations to ensure we're ready when the time comes to reopen. We don't know when that time is going to be, so the discussion today is about planning and preparation and anticipation. Now, we don't know if traffic will be lower or same or higher, but it makes sense that we prepare for maybe the downside and some of the challenges. Because a lot of you on this uh, webinar want to know, when are we going to see the malls reopen? Uh, what will be the levels of traffic we can expect? And what will be the characteristics of the new normal? And simply searching the web for articles and stories, you can kind of start to amass your own perception of what's going on in the world. David's going to talk later about what's going on in Asia. But for my research, I found that the customer levels in the malls are somewhere around 30 to 40 percent of what they were in the pre-COVID period. And we'll get into this in a minute. But there are some very good stories, like the Hermes store in Guangzhou that reported uh, the highest daily sales ever for a luxury brand in China. So we can see that there's this wide dichotomy of what's going to go uh, on in the Asian markets. And can we learn from this? I think we can prepare and, and examine and find out what your challenges are because we're in a global industry. But we know every country is different and every city is different and every retail category is different. We're going coming into the holy month of Ramadan. There's an expectation that people want to celebrate with their families and exchange gifts and have that, you know, family time because people are so frustrated from, the, from being locked down. But at the same time, every country, every city is continuing to sanitize and practice um, social distancing. So we don't know exactly when these centers are going to open or our centers are going to open. But I think the message is they are going to reopen at some stage and we need to be prepared. And the biggest preparation is the new area of customer safety that we've never really had to think about before. So if the traffic levels are also low in your centers coming back to business and sustaining through 2020, we're going to need to really understand that low sales translates into low, uh, sorry, low traffic translates into low sales. 
and that makes it difficult for our retail customers or retailers to make their financial obligations because the rent comes from the sales. So we need to be prepared to have the discussion we talked about yesterday and we'll get into it more today. We also need to think about malls are gonna open progressively. Today we have supermarkets and pharmacy and optical uh, dispensaries open and maybe the first wave will be some more essential shops. I was reading in Italy this morning that hardware stores and bookstores are opening but maybe not the malls are opening as a trial to see if people can practice social distancing and if the virus can be contained, allowing people to get outside. So there's lots of things going on that we need to really study. Let's talk about that meaningful discussion with the retailers. And it's been great that so many retailers have been reaching out and you know we're gonna to continue to have dialogue with the retailers. I know our, our good friend Ishwar Chugani from Giordano is getting very active and helping guide us. And Dave is gonna address some of his questions that he sent us earlier this morning. So we need to take a good idea when you're looking at how you're gonna deal with the relationship with your retailers to have a realistic viewpoint on where your property is in terms of the market. Are you the big successful long-term super regional mall? Or are you the little small community mall that just got started? And where are you in terms of the health check of the retailers in your property? Supermarkets are probably doing very well. So they may not require the assistance in financial, but they may require more operational assistance, which would put a burden on your, on your uh, operating costs. So in all of this, we have to come into a new reality of what is fair because retailers all over the world are saying, how can we sustain with low sales? How can we keep our shops open with no customers? How can we keep our businesses operating? And how do we pay our staff? So only that coordination we talked about yesterday, getting the owner to buy in and getting the senior management to buy in and making it clear that it's not one solution for everybody. It's each category needs to be looked at separately. And the solution is hard to define today because we don't know the duration of the lockdown. We don't know the conditions of the restarting period. So I think in any solution, there's going to have to be stages and thresholds that are put into the negotiation. Um, in some markets, also, we shouldn't forget that the banks and the lenders are going to have a say in this because there's debt service that many properties have that the lenders are either going to have to modify, forgive, or they're going to insist on making their, getting their payments. So, Again, this is not a simple answer, and there's no one, uh, one answer for all. I know that some markets, the retailers as a group, the senior retail groups are meeting with the authorities and meeting with local developers to see if they can get some consistency. So we'll watch that carefully to see if we're getting any kind of guidelines from that. And we always have to remember that we're that relationship between the tenant and the landlord, or let's call it the retailer and the, and the mall owner, is a legal relationship governed by a lease agreement, a legal contract. And that agreement is also, you know, in many parts um, managed under federal law. So once again, every solution will need to be customized. How do we regain the confidence of our customer? And this is really a simple question, but a very complicated answer. And I think it gets into the idea of what is the customer's psychology and what is the perception of their customer habits and some very rapidly changing habits as lockdowns, our people are, are enduring lockdowns and how they're thinking about shopping in the future. Yesterday, I mentioned I attended a webinar with retail designers and the reaction when they got to talking about, oh, the mall's reopening was very interesting. One of them said they were so excited about going shopping and seeing the visual merchandising and having coffee with their girlfriends. The other one said, you know, I'm a germaphobe and I never went into malls before and I'm not going to go into malls again because I don't trust the malls. And I think there's another, you know, there was another group that said, listen, we're mall designers and we're mall architects and we need to start thinking about social distancing and how we can actually design techniques into the mall to help with that. So what you see is that there is a very different reaction on going back to shopping different ages, different genders, different people of financial means are gonna react differently when the centers reopen. So I guess the best thing is that you need to try to gain the consumer's confidence 
And how are we going to do that? And I think it has to be meaningful. We can't just fake it. We have to understand the regime that we have to undertake in order to clean and sanitize and make our customers safe. You know, people are going to make their decisions about stepping out of their homes once they're comfortable with what the local jurisdictions, what the local federal government and here in Dubai, what the Dubai government is doing to make it safe to go back outside. <clears throat> once people have trust to do that, then they'll start thinking about, do I trust this restaurant? Do I trust this mall? Do I trust this metro stop? And, you know, they'll have to go through a myriad of questions on what am I going to do and is it going to be safe? So we have a big obligation to bring customers back on board and get them confident. But again, it's not just lip service. We actually have to do this. We're going to have to prepare like we've never prepared before. So during this lockdown period, it's the time for you to put together your crisis management, communications management that we talked about. Now, there was a topic that said social distancing, masks, and sanitization. And really, you know, I've, I've been involved with managing malls for almost 40 years. We never talked about this before. We never dealt with a pandemic before. We were talking about if a pandemic came, but we weren't prepared for it. And so now we see we have an obligation to prepare because when people come to our properties in the post uh, lockdown period, there's going to be a major requirement for social distancing. And who is going to keep track of all of that? That's us. That's the mall owners. That's the mall managers. That's the security guards. So it's not going to be easy. As David said, um, uh, on the website, there's some great information. Go to webinar. And look down the left hand side and you'll start to see checklists on what you need to start thinking about to prepare for reopening. And you know that sanitation, like we said, is something that we've never seen before that Abu Dhabi video, the amount of equipment, the amount of disinfectant, the amount of uh, rigorous training that's involved. So you need to go and talk to your local health authority today as to what they're thinking will be needed in your mall to bring you back online. You need to bring in those sanitation companies and ask them what is their success rate? What is their you know, capability? What is their track record? Who have they worked for? What testimonials can they give you? And what is their certification? And then you have to think about how to apply that to your property. The entire process will require education for your staff, for your senior management. We talked yesterday about signs being posted in multiple language, guidance to your customers about social distancing practices, stickers on the floor. You know, I went to the Waitrose store the other day, they were handing out masks and gloves. So I think we're gonna have to think about the same thing. So start stockpiling if you can get those because people are gonna want them. Now the challenges for your staff, we went through all of this communication getting organized, but the key is communication and consistency and making sure your staff's personal hygiene and how they manage other people with illnesses there's a protocol for everything. And some of the checklists will go through that. And remember, the frontline staff, some of them will be frightened because this is a new challenge and this, these are new times, so we need to make them feel more comfortable. We know that the senior management needs to take responsibility through the entire organization. And we talked about the commercial planning you need to do and how to engage the customer. But let's talk about the last topic I want to just uh, drill down on is being prepared for a new world with a different group of retailers or different groups of retailers at a different financial health level. As the lockdowns continue, we know that mom and pop retailers and many uh, of the small F&B retailers may not survive. And the ones that do survive may be just hanging on with a very, very small level of capital in order to, you know, restart their operations, start paying their staff, and maybe start paying rent. So we really need to think about how we're going to operate in this new world. We know the big companies like Al Shaya have already said they're on 5% income. So how long can they operate all their stores? So we need to also think about, can we work with them to make it comfortable or make it feasible on how to reopen? Finally, on new developments, like Mohammed, we were talking earlier before we started the webinar that he has not heard of any new developments stopping. But it does make logical sense that if our strong existing malls are losing some retail clients, then it's going to make it more challenging for the new development. But there may be some light here because 
there may be a new kind of shopping center format or open air or smaller formats that people can modify right now, maybe take part of the retail and turn it into a residential tower or a, a healthcare facility. So there are opportunities. And I really think we're going to see a new retail development era and it's gonna come in phases because obviously post COVID, a lot of people are just gonna to try to figure out their bearings and what their financial capability is and who may be in and who's not in. But I think great malls will now start thinking today about how they can be digital. How can the mall be online? And when the customer returns, how can you give great customer service? So think those ones through because this is the time to plan. Like I said, there'll be repurposing space, open air concepts will be more popular. I think we're gonna see a revamping of our tenant mix strategies. And like I said, I don't think retail development is going to go away. We're just in a whole new era. So thank you so much for listening to these comments uh, as a guidance for you. And I'd now like to turn it over to my good friend, uh, Mohammed Alawi in Jeddah. Thank you once again. Thank you, Phil. Uh, good morning, everybody. Sabah al khair in Arabic, and I hope everybody is in good shape. As we all uh, heard yesterday and today from everybody, that uh, I am one of the people I still have a very high positive, high positive with the questions also. And when it comes to Saudi Arabia, in the last few, three weeks, four weeks, uh, I was involved in many discussions with many developers and also with different associations like Jeddah Shambars, uh, some people from Riyadh, some people from other countries. The country in, in general is no different from anywhere in the world. We have, we have to put a lot of focus group to work together, especially in our industry, the retail property, to make sure that uh, everything at least on control uh, whenever that we are ready to open and whenever the authorities and the government uh, instructs us to start operating like what's happening in other countries in the world. Uh, there is a list of uh, what I call it, uh, uh, instruction came out from different authorities uh, in different various uh, times. Uh, give you an example, the delivery teams had under now a certain organization, they put for them a certain uh, rules and uh, list of health check and all those type of regulation have to do it and adhere to it. Uh, restaurant and supermarket and logistic and all things had been going through uh, a big review list of checklists to do it in their warehouse, in their facility for their staff. Um, recently, a big move onto what we call it uh, Mount Bauer uh, residential or labor camps or, or big, big complex of labor. So some of the companies, especially the warehousing, I think they have a lot of stuff they, to accommodate. So another big checklist and Minister of Health also tabbing inside there and making sure that all the people, I could see all those form of organizations uh, coming on orders or list of check from the government authorities in various, uh, in various organizations like the Ministry of uh, the Municipality and others. Are, it's sort of probation uh, for the whole country in general and for the retail especially and for the retail property in particular that to get ready. And I have to ask all the people just this, uh, during all that session we do it here in Saudis, I'm involved heavily with the chamber. We do it a lot of seminars online and uh, many retail and shopping malls in the country there. They join us and we ask them to get ready for that. The feedback I'm receiving from a lot of shopping malls that, uh, that they starting on, the people who didn't create their uh, crisis management team, they created, the people start communicating with their retailer with all their shareholders' uh, stocks and their retailers or even service provider to get ready and uh, they could see that feedback is positive, that everybody preparing himself. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of good report of uh, what I call it, uh, wisdom deals happening between retailer and uh, shopping mall uh, developer. Some of them agree on certain deals, uh, either reduction or delays or uh, percentage uh, sales. And rarely I'm hearing that people are not in, in agreement because the, the, the wisdom here is that we both are in the same boat and we need to be surviving together. And I think from that, that point, is, it's the people start. 
I'm asking all the people in the shopping industry, they have to be prepared with different multiple options to their client and their retailer. Their retailers, they, they, they're willing to reach with them an agreement or discussions how to, to, to jump together above this crisis. And I'm sure that everybody, if they open their mind, there is an option of that delaying payment, option of uh, uh, waiting for the government fund uh, to certain employees, staff. Uh, yesterday, the government had also reduced the electricity 30% for all commercial, industrial, uh, agriculture, and healthcare. And this is also boosted a lot of their uh, cost. And I think all those type of financial deal and weaning between all the uh, developer, and, developer and retailer will be continued. And uh, I, I, I feel uh, confident that everybody is under, 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 under one umbrella discussing all these things. Uh, if you ask me about the new de development in the country, uh, which I involved as a consultant, which I know, uh, till today, uh, as, as uh, Phil was mentioning, no one decided to cancel it or delay it or thing. But definitely, after the crisis, uh, and it, it makes sense, after the crisis, everybody will jump again with all his teams to review and study all the outcome of the crisis the commercial out, outcome, the retail outcomes, uh, who will be alive, who will not be alive. The, the other things, uh, I think that the big uh, boost for the digital platform in the country and the, the e-commerce, it will have a lot of impact on that decision. I know a lot of the, I know a lot of the uh, shopping mall which one uh, we are involved as, as a chairman for Sahad. They also already had already an agreement for a good uh, e-commerce uh, platform to work better with their teams and with their retailers to support their retailers, which that's a wise decision, I think. And actually we started this is early before, before the crisis, but uh, it's getting now in actions. Uh, I know many other shopping mall day calling uh, different uh, platforms, uh, digital platform to work better with their business, and I think this is a very wise thing. Uh, the form, the form of the current traditional mall definitely, as well, will be changing. We're not going to see uh, the the retailer alone. More into experience, entertainment, uh, more into food, uh, services, uh, medical health will be. Uh, inside the medical clinic will be inside the shopping malls. Uh, a lot of those things are going to be working together, together within, within the, the development uh, coming on. And I am sure that this is, will make all the new development rethinking uh, their mix, rethinking about their uh, design, layout, more life, more open lifestyle shopping malls to relax people in it rather than just purely retail uh, shopping uh, experience. Um, I would like to say about the retailer example of uh, uh, cooperation with, uh, with, the, with the mall operators. Uh, I heard a lot of good uh, stories. Uh, example, some of them they offer uh, within their life, uh, uh, open life uh, shopping malls for the for retailer to open for uh, if, it's allowed during the times allowed. Some of them also help some of the retailer in uh, giving them an empty storage for some of their uh, extra brands uh, coming in the market and keep it in there for free. I know also that uh, some of them also, they, they, they giving them a list of check how to do their maintenance and even the using their maintenance team to support the retailer using their product to repair the readiness for their stores to be ready. As you all you know that we are entering Ramadan soon, uh, inshallah 24th of April. And uh, in Ramadan, it's, uh, it's a high season shopping in, in Saudi and many Muslim countries and Arab countries in the world, uh, preparing for the Eid festival. And we are hoping that uh, within this month of Ramadan, partially the mall will be open, inshallah. Uh, and this is, it need more and more cooperation now between the tenant and uh, retail uh, property owners. 
we had a list, uh, many, many mall operator had developed a list of checklists for the retailer to work on it, get ready. So not be surprised when the authorities put that list uh, and they start to examine before allowing shopping mall to open. And I think many retailers are working on that. Many malls also, they starting now preparing their malls to be reopened within all those checklists. And I think this is, will add uh, a value for the times. Time is very crucial. So since we are in, in close period now, I think it's the right time we should start uh, uh, working and knowing what we're doing about it. Uh, one of the things that I noticed a customer, um, uh, definitely uh, I am one of them as a customer. Uh, we experience something new to us. Uh, uh, the amount of that we depending 100% on a day on, uh, on e-commerce and deliveries and uh, platform, digital platform in everything. It's not only just in our shopping, in our shopping, in our medical needs, in our government uh, document and everything. Definitely this is, would be impact uh, in our uh, customs. Our customers will go out from home. They will love to visit more because they need to, to experience something to change their, uh, uh, their mood a little bit. But definitely uh, the, the growth of the digitals uh, and online uh, shopping it have to be very considered and have to be very studied very well. So all of us, we could use it very wise. And it is not secret. We were talking about shopping mall and omni channel for the last maybe four or five years in the industry. And today, this, this crisis, I think it's, it's had pushed that uh, uh, industry, the digital industry forward uh, with the customer. And customer uh, use it. And I think more regulation will be coming to impose that. The digital. So one of the things that I think I advise everybody whenever you have a new tenant max, you make sure all your new retailer who jumping with you on your new project have a very good uh, solid uh, digital experience within their uh, portfolio. So they have to use it parallel to their uh, st physical store. Uh, I think uh, this is in particular, um, I'm, I'm happy that uh, to receive any more question uh, soon. And uh, uh, we'll be in touch always, inshallah, in the next uh, session on Sunday. Mohammed, thank you. And thank you, Phil, for your input as well. It's great, great to hear both your insights. On the um, schedule of events today, my role is to talk about China and the Asia checkup. And what I've done is what's happening on the ground with the malls reopening in Asia. Um, I've been in touch on the phone with um, a colleague, uh, her name is Lucy Liu from the Semir Group in Beijing. They're manufacturers and they sell casual clothing lines and they specialize also in children's clothing uh, with some shops there, Balabara is one of their names. So uh, as a, she, she said a couple of things that were very interesting for me to hear. Um, the first thing I think Phil had highlighted earlier as well was that shopping center overall, the traffic was down perhaps around 40% thereabouts. And that the corresponding sales were down around 40% or thereabouts. She said that the F&B operators were back now running at around 80%. Um, so it, it sounds to me as if uh, the food and beverage is kicked up quite quickly. And I think people like to get together, but there are some regulations apparently on how to stay and how to dine and how to do that comfortably. And we'll, we'll share those with you as well. I know that Singapore came out with a, some ideas that everyone was, um, was asked to do something in a certain way. And I know we'll have those with our website as well. One of the things that, um, that also came up was the cinema, the opening and closing. Um, she felt that it was a little bit aggressive opening when they did and they've closed again, but they're looking forward to opening again soon. She also spoke about this revenge buying that Phil had mentioned earlier. Revenge buying is um, basically is defined as when a buyer was suggested that they, they uh, have a pent up demand for purchasing products previously unavailable to them. So I guess if you're previously unavailable to go shopping then that's how this would qualify being a revenge buying. So they, they bought a lot of goods out of that one shop in Guangzhou. On the other side, Lucy Lee was saying the more normal thing is to, it's about 40%. Um, 
But what she did say, which I want to convey back to everyone, which has got me thinking about our, our webinars and weeks to come. But she said that um, their group had a lot of stores and a lot of employees in their stores, and they were all sitting at home. The Samir group came up with an idea that said, look, we have all the contacts of everybody who's bought everything from us online before and in the stores. They have all their contacts and coordinates for all of the different types of products that they have bought before. And so they made up a program that was uh, very successful. She said that they got back up over 90% of their normal sales by using it. So they gave a commission to all of these salespeople who were otherwise sitting at home to go back online to communicate with all of these past shoppers who had bought things and goods from the Samir group from their various different brands. What they were able to do was connect with them online and able to make things work to up and boost their sales. So I think what I'd like to do on that line and that way of thinking, and Lucy was very helpful for me in thinking about this was in the future, and perhaps the week after next or whenever we get to it, we'll do another webinar series on what it's like to have great online shopping, even when you're in the lockdown situation, and even when you're actually a physical bricks and mortar store to help when you're not open to keep the sales flowing. So there were some interesting things there. Some of the other questions that I had been asked, what categories have been most impacted and I would suggest that all categories have been impacted, but I would suggest that certainly the food and beverage, because generally speaking, the food and beverage operators do not have uh, the deep pockets that other major retailers have uh, to operate uh, going ongoing. So they have been most happy to open and back in, but they have had to do a lot of different ways of making sure that the social distancing is in place and uh, to make sure the preventions are in place, that there's no rebound. On, on what's going on with COVID-19. And what are the new habits of the Asian customer? Well, the new habits are basically, it's convinced them to carry on in their shopping. Uh, even as I've said before, when the, when the people are contacting them. So the shopkeepers, the people from the shops were actually contacting their old customers from their database and facilitating these sales. I think it's a great idea. And how have Alibaba and other Asian-based e-commerce businesses fared during the pandemic? I think well, and I think from what I've read very well, I think the challenge has been from them, the logistical and the supply chain to keep that flowing well. Also with the food and the de delivery of the food products, I think there's been some hiccups in that regard for a number of the food suppliers in Asia. I think it's mainly uh, not that there's not enough food, but that there's getting the, the supply chain working enough so that the people could be, have the deliveries as, as they're able to and when they can receive them. So those are the, the top things that have been happening there. Um, I want to uh, begin by opening the question and answer format. And uh, one of our, our great supporters uh, who's been with us all the way along and who's one of the um, original supporters and the, the founding fathers of the organization is Ishwar Chagani. And Ishwar has come forward and he's, he's lent me some personal thoughts to feel free to share later or add on. And so I'm going to do that now because Ishwar, I know that your insights are always important and also Ishwar's impact. Uh, good to see you, Ishwar. Your, your impact in the retailers is, is significant. You've always been with us and you're a good supporter of the organization. What I'm going to start with what you finally finished with Ishwar, because I think this is the most important part. And you've said, we cannot always control what is happening, which is so true. You cannot always control what's happening, but we can control what we respond and how we respond to what is happening. So when you're talking about that, you're saying the preparedness, our malls prepared and ready to accept customers. And I know we've shared some of that communication and information. This should be a unified and team effort by all malls and retailers along with the government. That is, to, that is okay to go out again, but proper protocols and care have to be followed. And even a month before the closures, you were saying sales were already down by 70 to 80%. And I know that they were down, I didn't know that much. Ishwara said, expect this to continue for a few more months and it'll gradually improve. 
He says, my gut feel is that by the second half, we will see business back by about 60% store on store sales, which is I think great news. This will be a critical area to review with the landlords to find ways to make things work in the interim. And finally, you've mentioned here that this is a global pandemic affecting everyone everywhere. Uh, Ishwar goes on to say, I trust that the ecosystem where everyone does their part, governments will do what's best they can, companies will do with their best to keep their staff and themselves safe and healthy and out of harm's way, and developers, be it malls or private landlords, will also do their part. It's a group effort, we're all in this together, but I want to, now that I can see you on the screen, uh, Ishwar, go ahead and add some thoughts or questions to the team that we have here. Um, thank you, everyone. I guess at the moment, it's just patience and perseverance. Um, the government is doing everything they can to keep us safe. Um, we have been in touch on the highest levels. We've been in touch with all the big retailers as well. Right now, the focus is, I think, if everybody sees, every day the cases are going higher. So I'm very confident that the, the government will take more action and I think extend this uh, stay at home for some time. They may adjust it a bit, like some of the um, different businesses on essentials, but we should not just stay at home and do nothing. Now is the time to engage with the malls. Uh, now is the time for retailers to be ready. We have also requested some time that they shouldn't tell us that tomorrow open your stores because definitely many of us will have to reallocate our staffing. Uh, while the stores have been closed, we have even experienced maintenance issues with water leaking inside. So definitely there will be things to work on, merchandising. So now is the time for even malls to start, as mentioned, um, what are you doing where, for anyone entering the mall and communicating it to the public that when you come to our mall, we will make sure that we do everything we can. Having a medical center or medical backup in the mall is important. I guess it's something that we all have to work together. Finger pointing is not an excuse. It's not the way forward. Right now may also not be the right. I know that we, we are worried about the rents from the malls. From my experience, every mall has been proactive. I have never seen them call me back when I write to them. I have never seen them reply so quickly. Asking them for something immediately, we may be asking either too less or too much. So a little more patience and perseverance. They are knowing what has to be done. Almost everybody has confirmed they would not charge during the closure. We as a group, Globally, we are working on it. Locally, with all the retailers, we are looking at what's the best option. Uh, unfortunately, we also see that some people who are currently doing the malls are the first to approach for, for rental rebate. So let's not be greedy, let's be fair. In the end, uh, I think if we just work together on this, do what we have to do, keep our people safe, keep ourselves safe, I think we will prevail. Thank you. Thank you, Ishwar. It's always a pleasure to see and hear you. Do we have other questions now? Yes. Uh, the second question is from Anthony Sperry. Go ahead. Hi, Anthony. I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, sorry. Is that any better? That's better. Yeah, speaking okay. into your mic. Yep. Sure. Uh, yeah, thank you.
Um, some of the footboard in those malls is reaching up to 50, 60% already. Um, it certainly seems as if the luxury components are the ones that are benefiting the most. Um, they're around 40% down year on year, whereas the general retail components are around 50, 55% down. So, very interesting to see the luxury bounce back. And as yourself and Phil uh, mentioned. Sorry, Anthony, I think, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I think there's a problem with the, uh, with the audio. Um, you're ah, cutting okay. it in out. Sorry about that. If okay. you have a microphone, you can speak more closely to. Okay, let me try and fix that. I'll come back. Okay. All right. uh, Angelo, another question? Yes, uh, the next question is coming from, hold on. Uh, we have Ronnie Aoun. Okay, Roni. Hey to you all. Uh, thank you for all the input. Uh, Ishwar was mentioning about uh, mall owners or mall operators giving enough notice to retailers to be to be ready to reopen in terms of uh, setting up uh, at the shops. And I was wondering about the availability of goods when we're all ready to be operational again. Uh, I know when the uh, when the crisis hit us was back maybe two months ago, and most of the stores had the winter collection. Um, even though retailers they forecast in advance uh, for spring summer collection, for fall winter collection, and so on, uh, but we know at the same time that most of the manufacturing facilities, especially in the in the textile industry and the shoes. Uh, they shut down too. So I'm wondering if we are up and running again in two months or in three months, if the retailers will have enough goods to display um, in, in, in order to reassume uh, uh, their sale operation. Thanks, Roni. Perhaps Ishwar, have you, uh, with your experience with your business, have you uh, any feedback that you could offer for Roni, Ishwar? Uh, yes, um, most of the retailers I've spoken to have actually already brought in their Ramadan inventory for the simple reason that Ramadan is between three to four months of a normal <clears throat> sale, especially in Saudi. Most of us have multiple stores, so being we have the capacity to move inventory where required because some stores we may not be able to open depending on the business or some stores we will just minimize the merchandise. Also, keeping in mind that we expect business to only be about 20, 25% in the first few weeks, we will also have the capacity to bring in more because most brands will have enough inventory. Um, most professional retailers are ready, but they will not open if they know that their employees and customers are not safe, depending on the situation, only if there's a go all clear. In fact, when I say this, we actually wanted, most of us wanted to close a few days before the official announcement, because we realized how the gravity of the situation. And one more point, um, two people impersonated me on the chat today. So it's something we have to be careful because I see questions thrown on the chat, not by me. Thank you. Thanks, Ishwar. And that's a heads up for us. We'll, we'll watch for that. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, Angelo, sorry. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the next question is from Raghu Nandan, Verma. OK. Hi there. Hello. 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 Yeah, sorry, he pronounced my name wrong. Apologies. Okay. Okay, uh, thanks a lot, you know, for organizing this webinar. It's been fantastic. I've been attending this for these three days. I have Great. two questions. One can be answered at a later stage. The first, do we have a banker on board during these discussions? Because this particular element has a lot of major role to play where it's got to do with the landlord or even with the retailer. It would be nice to hear something from their end as well as a banker. And my second question is uh, from the last discussion with Debbie, being a cinema operator and some of the FECs, what are their rebound plans, you know, that they're currently working on, you know, in closed doors 
that would actually be you know incorporated with the landlord who can then work you know in tandem and then you know come up to the market and show you know the positive sides of entering our assets here these are the two questions thanks Paul Richard I can start with one we have some great members in the banking community at the senior levels particularly in Abu Dhabi and we'll be happy to get them um, back and hooked up and perhaps uh, send us an email and I can hook you up with that person directly so that you can have your your questions answered from a banking perspective not necessarily from your bank but from a banking perspective and then the other question you had was um, uh, I'm sorry it's it escaped me cinema the rebound oh, the cinema go ahead phil cinema yeah, and fbc the rebound plan phil go ahead i, I think again um, like ishwar was saying you know everybody's wanting to make sure the environment is safe and hoping the authorities can give us that direction. So that's just the first stage of opening or reopening. We know the cinemas are gonna open later, the entertainment centers, because these are very um, closed in spaces and very uh, related to touch and you know, sanitization is gonna be a big issue. Um, it'd be great if we could get our friends from uh, uh, Saudi um, who are running the entertainment centers. Um, uh, Mohammed, uh, yeah. maybe recommend uh, uh, the, the guys um, or Debbie from uh, the cinema chain and maybe we can get some ideas on what they're thinking about in terms of planning. But I guess the, the point gets down to it's a plan, but it's relating to a lot of external input. Yeah. Uh, one, one comment, Phil. Uh, I was being in touch in Saudi with a few cinema operators and uh, I, I'm glad to hear that some of them already starting putting like uh, an early plan for opening their cinema whenever the authority do it. And I saw that some of their checklist. First of all, they're doing now online training to their staff. And I think this is very important. And maybe they were also trying to minimize the number of people on the shows and that as a, as a starter. And I saw some of them, they have like a business plan whenever the authority allowed, they will pass it to the authority to be approved of them. Uh, I, I heard also from the, some of the shopping mall, the cinema operator and the entertainment operator and FCE are doing a lot of now uh, cleaning and doing centralizations to the place. And also uh, they do, they're doing a measurement where people they should go and how. And, uh, and it, it's sort of, it's a period of preparation and training for the employees. It, it's a very important. I think retainer also, they need to do this, this training to their staff because I've been told some countries that more than five or six people in the small store, they're not allowed. People, they have to wait. Somebody have to be eating outside and allow them to be, make sure that they have their mask on their face and, uh, and, and getting ready to enter the store. I think that it's a period. We have to use it all for training and learning. We keep learning every day from everybody. Thank you, Angelo. Next question. Yes, uh, we have a question from Malik. Hi everyone. Hello, Malik. How are you? Great good to see you. To, good to see you. Sitting in Lahore in lockdown. Hi Phil. Hi. 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 I see a lot of my friends uh, there. And thank you very much for organizing such a uh, session. I think it's time for us to all discuss and rethink uh, uh, shopping malls, how we are going to go forward. And you've got some of the pioneers, Mahmoud Alvi and Phil. Uh, Phil, who started the malls and yourself uh, in Dubai, and I think you, it's time for us to take guidance from all of you to move forward. I'm working on a couple of malls, but I have two questions um, and uh, one suggestion. Um, I think we, what I suggest is that you put, down, put three groups together for webinar for us to start working on SOPs, um, how are we going to run and operate the shopping malls? For example, operation, and if I take operational SAP, uh, I look at the entry points, and we'll have three stakeholders entering our shopping malls, customers, employees, and suppliers. How are we going to ensure that when at the entry point, they are um, healthy? Uh, and if, if I was to, I'm writing uh, for a smaller mall here, some uh, processes. For example, 
walk-through gates at the entry point whereby disinfection and the temperature check, check takes place. We will also take help from the footfall counter, thermal, um, uh, and the CCTV. Now the contact tracing is another challenge for us because if a customer comes in and customer is healthy or incubation period, and they happen to meet a, a, a shop at a place and after a few days they've been discovered of COVID-19, how do we trace them? So we're coming up with an app and it's, it's a very challenging and I suggest that you put down people together and we start working on an app, which then can have uh, uh, an application whereby it is scanned at the entrance when they're entering and when they're shopping also can be scanned and uh, customers can be traced back. And if uh, an uh, employee happened to uh, have a positive COVID uh, case, then we can trace back to the customers and inform them. And this is something we have to work with the, uh, the government organizations uh, to work with. So that's one. Number two, how are we going to ensure that all our employees who are coming, they are healthy, um, and I think we must have separate interns for the employees and separate set of rules for employees. And the third stakeholder are suppliers who will come and supply goods. We must have a separate set of rules for them. So SOPs are very, this is a good time. I, I understand we are discussing about rentals and the tenant mix and which is important, but once we are operational, we don't want to go into uh, an issue whereby there is one case, we have experienced that uh, in Villaggio and a mall where we had an issue and then small issue, the fire civil defense will come and close down the whole mall. We don't want to get into that negative. Sure. So it's sure. a good time that we get these three entry points policies. And the second is the uh, social distancing, uh, like uh, will uh, uh, I think uh, Mohammed was mentioning about the store, how many uh, number of people can go into the store, but what about the walkways and the chaos? So sure. what social distance, like uh, during the civil, uh, fire incident, we had a minimum 12 meter uh, walkways. So are we going, let's start working as a shopping mall industry and put those rules together, which can minimize the uh, contact or, or create um, social distance. And the third is, uh, is very tricky, which is food court. Our food court shops are close to each other. KFC is next to McDonald's and there's a queue. It's very difficult to keep them apart. And how are we going to um, have those stores plan in our tenant mix planning and the seating arrangement, even if you ask them to sit separate in food court, you will be still bumping in and walking and the third policy, I think we should come up with a toilet policy. Who is going to use toilet? There must be separate toilet for employees, separate toilet for the stakeholder, uh, the suppliers, and for the customers also uh, entry from the outside. So we have to rethink the whole um, uh, design of the mall. I know it's very challenging and too much of an asking, but I think these three policies are very uh, uh, important. The, the fourth policy I think we should come up with is the health policy for our employees. They mm -hmm. all should register. And once we open it, if we have some way to check that these are all COVID-19 negative, you start with those employees first. And they start working in, in, in the, and for the cinemas, I think we should not open the cinemas. Cinemas should have separate app. And on that app, the only person is invited to come and watch the movie who is either COVID negative or uh, have the antibodies or some sort of certificate. Phil, that, Malik, yeah. thank you, Phil, to, go ahead. I just want to jump in because that's a lot of very good um, thought process on how we're going to manage, right? And we, you're asking us for specific details. And I think the more questions we ask, the more concerns we have, the better. I just wanted to show that there is an app here in the UAE, it's called Trace COVID. And I'll just see if I can hold it up to the camera. No, can't, yeah, can't see, Phil. Can't see it. No. Um, but this is an app that I downloaded, I think it's from the UAE government. And if I'm in the supermarket, uh, it will tell me if there's COVID uh, uh, carrier or someone recovered near me, and then I can take action 
I don't really quite understand what action will be taken, but I think the use of artificial intelligence is becoming uh, increasingly uh, valuable. And I'm sure we'll see more of these kinds of technologies rolling out. So that was my only comment. Um, Malik had so many good points. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Malik. I appreciate that. And I'm looking at the time and we've got after 12 already. So we're past our, our timing on it. Um, I want to make sure that everyone who's listening and is participating with this webinar is aware that uh, our team, Mohammed, Phil, and I, and anyone else who's here can share comments, but we're gonna to have to stop now and go on on Sunday morning um, in Dubai, 11 o'clock a.m. Dubai time. And I know that Phil and Mohammed and myself, we really wanna pursue these conversations. And I think that on our webinar that's scheduled for Sunday, we'll be able to attack all of these questions that we've been um, left perhaps some have been left unanswered, but we want to make sure that everyone before we're done has had a say in what we're trying to do. So um, unless Phil or Mohammed, you have anything else to add, I think that we're, uh, we're pretty much done for today. I just think we have to just thank everybody and remind everybody that we're all making this sacrifice. Keep safe, stay home, you know, work remotely and we'll figure this all out. Thanks, Phil. Mohammed, anything? Uh, same as Phil, I would like to thank everybody and uh, we will be in touch. You have our email, you have everything and anything we could do and maybe the next session, uh, Sunday, will give more time for questions uh, um, rather than we speak a lot. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. I really appreciate your support and joining us here today and uh, we'll be in touch, if not uh, before Sunday, for sure Sunday. Thank you very much. Thanks, David. Thank you.